The RLC is in a special category of its own. It is the fourth biggest inland lake in the world and it shrank to less than half its size. This is the greatest loss of water caused by human beings on the planet. A Russian professor called Glazovsky invited us to go to a conference all the way to the RRC. I think it was an adventure for uh, any British academic to go into the Soviet Union, let alone to go to Uzbekistan, which was virtually closed. As we flew over the RRC, we began to realise there was a severe environmental problem. Stalin needed cotton for the army, for his tents and clothes. So he introduced cotton growing in the area, and the only way you can do that is by irrigation in a semi-arid area. The result of doing that is that you do get salination of the soils over time, and the soils diminish in their fertility. So your obvious thing to do if you're losing fertility is to use fertilizers. You will use pesticides. And then the next step is to defoliate, to get rid of the leaves so that the picking is easier. What happens when sea level goes down is that it actually goes out and it exposes the sea floor. And that sea floor was salt and mud and silt and sand and all the human waste from the Sirdaya River and all the pollutants from all of the agriculture as well. And it was very nasty stuff. What then happens is that you have seasonal winds blowing, and particularly the northeast wind, which sweeps right across this exposed seabed, picks up a dust cloud, and it's made up of all that toxic waste. It goes over towns and it causes untold damage. The young children were getting respiratory illnesses. They, they couldn't breathe. There were problems with the women who weren't bearing children. I can remember walking from the hotel and there were women just sitting under loquat trees all the way down the road. They had nothing, they looked very hungry and poor. So with a few colleagues we went into the nearby shop and all bought a bag of goodies and took them back and uh, chatted to the ladies and just walked on leaving the paper bags full of food there. And the next day when I came back one of the women was still sitting there and she'd obviously wanted to be able to give us something back. And I can remember her just reaching up to the local tree and, and picking a seed and just putting it in my hand. And it was all she had to give me. And I brought it home and it's growing in the corner of my garden now. A shoreline is the only place on Earth where the land and the ocean and the atmosphere meet and it meets in a little narrow line because it's a shock absorber absorbing all the energy of the sun through the wind into the waves and ending up on a beach and a beach goes, thanks very much, you know, give me some more. If you haven't got the sea there, crumbs. <laughs>